Rose, can you please turn off that damn kettle? Thank you. Melvin, are you okay? Yes. No, you're not. Well, of course I'm not. How am I expected to finish my book if I can't remember a thing? Oh, that's ridiculous. No, what's ridiculous is a man trying to write his memoir and he's got no memoir to re-memoir. <laughs> Come on, T, I just want to work on my book. No, it's going to help you, really. Well, maybe the caffeine will jog my memory. It's empty. <laughs> huh? Oh, where is my head? I, I, I had a bag of... of a raspberry fusion tea bag there, and I was saving it for, uh, for... For Armageddon? <laughs> Don't laugh. There's enough caffeine in there to, to wake the dead. Rose, I'm just trying to work on my book, and you're driving me crazy with these tea bags. Well, I can't even get through the introduction. Maybe you should have written down what you wanted to remember to write down, and... Who reads introductions anyway? Hey, that's not really fair. A minute ago you brought me a cup of tea without any tea in it, and now you're criticizing me? Hey, don't lump me in with you. I remember plenty. Who was this tea for, you or me? <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. You've got such a great memory. Give me a word that I'm thinking of. Uh, begins with a P. P? It... Pig squeak, polywog, poppycock? No, no, it has the five definition. Um... It means when something is similar to something else. Oh, you mean like equal? <laughs> equal doesn't begin with a P. <laughs> Got it. Synchronized. Synchronized doesn't start with a P either. <laughs> what does a P have to do with it? Oh, you just said, never mind, I have to take out the garbage. out of the washer? No, but I found your bras in my shirt drawer this morning. Oh, I looked all over for them, and, and then I, I thought I maybe didn't do the laundry that I was sure that I did do, but look, the laundry basket's half empty. Yeah, like something else I see. <laughs> oh, I thought maybe a sneak thief had gotten into the house and was rummaging through my unmentionable. I guess I should be lucky he didn't get his paws on my tight butts make me nuts t-shirt. Oh, that would be an irreparable loss. Oh, but, hey. oh, you know, I thought maybe, hey, wait a minute, what made you say he was a he? She could be a perv also, you know. Oh, Never mind. Wait a minute, what are we arguing over? Everybody knows there's no thieves in Laguna Woods. No? How about that guy that kept calling us just because our grandson happened to be in jail in Tijuana? Yeah, he told him to stop. He stopped calling after I told him they could keep him. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, did you take out the garbage? It's really starting to smell here. Oh, I thought I did. Well, something sure stinks. Maybe it's you? I mean, it really is curdling. Hey, I think it's those socks you're wearing that you've been having on for three days straight. Oh, I guess I forgot. Let's face it, Rose, neither of us can remember a thing anymore. We need help. You're right. I'm going to call Dr. Margaret. She'll tell us what to do. Um... P, P. How about pithy? What is, how does pithy sound? Poopy. <laughs> so, Margaret, all those tests that Melvin and I took, what do they mean? Well, the good news is there's no indication of dementia or Alzheimer's. Good, we can leave. <laughs> but you both have MCI. Uh, no, we both have AT&T. <laughs> MCI stands for Mild Cognitive Impairment. Oh, boy. Oh, well, uh, 
at least it's mild. Well, for now, but as we age, we lose brain cells. And over time, our memory gets worse. My memory used to be so good. Now I can't even remember nouns. I mean, I'll start a sentence, I'll be steaming along, and I get to a noun, and I go brain dead. I'm even worse. I, I can't remember the names of people I've known for years, even my own grandchildren. I if I have to get to the youngest, I have to go through all of them in order. Um, Rondo, um, Diesel, uh, Birdie, Ace, and, and Bow Wow before I get to Judy. So what do you have for us, Margaret? Some potion, some pill, some magic stem cell thing? Well, unfortunately, there is no medical cure yet. Oh. But with MCI, you could stay like this for years, and you could get worse, oh. and there is no cure. You're freaking us out, Margaret. But there is hope. You need to fight back. Eat a good, healthy diet, like the Mediterranean mm. diet. Mm -hmm. Remember, food that's good for the body is good for the mind. And exercise daily. I've signed you up for brain camp. <laughs> Brain camp? <laughs> but what are we going to do, sing songs and roast marshmallows? No, you're going to work on puzzles and math problems and riddles. How's that supposed to help? Well, research shows that exercising the brain with games like Sudoku, for instance, produces more brain cells and results in, in better memory. This is crazy. I'm losing my marbles and you're giving us tic-tac-toe? Well, the first thing you have to do is stay calm. When you get agitated, you can't remember as well. It all seems so hopeless. Yeah, well, maybe a vacation. Get away for a few days. Go out, have fun, play. I don't know. The thought of planning a vacation is so... You tell her, Melvin. Tell her what? Well, how should I know? You see? Hopeless. No. What you have to do is carry a pad and pen with you any time you go, anywhere. That way, if you think of something that you need to remember, you write it down. Write it down? Yes, write it down. Can I keep this? Oh, Melvin, don't yes, take her pen. Yes, I her. have plenty. You can keep that. And tell me. Truthfully, do you really have a grandchild named Judy? <laughs> Weird, isn't it? <laughs> thank you for inviting me. Dinner was delicious. Oh, no, thank you, Margaret, for the whole write it down thing. It changed everything. I'm glad I was able to help. I'm putting together a doggy bag for you from the leftover. Is that the doggy bag? <laughs> no, silly, this is garbage. You know, Rose, I think you'd better start a whole new pad on domestic chores, you know, bringing things in, taking things out. <laughs> well, actually, I am starting a whole new pad for Melvin. You should see his bathroom. It's like being in the men's room in a Texaco station at the Mojave Desert. How would you know? You know, I really have to go. It's, uh... Oh, don't go yet. We haven't had dessert. Uh, Melvin, could you get us some ice cream? Sure, honey. What kind? Vanilla. Write it down. You don't think I'll remember vanilla ice cream? But I want it with chocolate syrup. Okay. Uh, and whipped cream and nuts around it. Here, yeah. write it down. Oh, I'd like some too. I know I told you to eat healthy, but a good sugar high is good once in a while. Vanilla ice cream, chocolate syrup, yada, yada, yada. I don't have to write that down. A, a, a cherry on top, please. Give me a break. And we call her Bow Wow because she used to bark when she got angry. <laughs> <laughs> Melvin, where are you? It's been half an hour. Oh. Here you are, Rose. An egg, bacon, potatoes, guacamole, and salsa on top. Voila! 
And it took you that long to make it? Well. So, where's the toast? Oh, never mind, I'll get it. You know, I think I'd better be going. I've got a big day tomorrow. Well, look, while I'm going out, why don't I take the garbage? Wait, I haven't told you about our vacation. It was sensational. The scenery was just gorgeous. The hotel was the best hotel we ever stayed at. Hmm, maybe I'll go there myself. Uh, what was the name of the hotel? Uh, um, uh, wait a minute, I have a picture of it, but it's a noun. Never you know mind. the trouble I have I'll with nouns. I'll just Google all the hotels in no, there. No, 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 it's right on the tip of my tongue. Um, What's the name of that flower? Usually red, smells really nice on a long stem. It's got a lot of thorns on it. Oh, you mean a rose? Yeah. Ro rose! What's the name of that hotel we stayed at? <laughs> No, that's not the, no. No, then, right. Because after poopy, I just, you leave and I just look at the tape. I'm Sheila Bialka, and I played the psychiatrist in the little film you've just watched called Write It Down. Now, what you've just watched is a fictional play, but the situation discussed, MCI, mild cognitive impairment, is a very real problem, especially for a lot of our residents here in the village. The second half of our program consists of information from experts in the field about what you can do if you suspect that you or someone you love has MCI. First, we will hear from two people who deal with MCI on a daily basis. Next. Hi there, I'm Lisa Calavita with Memorial Care Home Health, and I'm here with my guests, Allison Lerick from Cognitive Care Solutions and Dr. Trin from um, Irvine Clinical Research. So, Allison, can you talk about modifiable risk factors? What are they? Modifiable risk factors are the lifestyle factors that we can make changes in our daily life. Those include physical exercise, nutrition, brain exercises, socialization, and managing stress, depression, and anxiety, as well as maintaining good sleep. Great. Dr. Trin, so what is Alzheimer's plaque? Alzheimer's plaque are proteins that build up abnormally in the brain. Uh, we call them beta amyloid, and it's identified with the diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Those who have Alzheimer's have the plaque. Those without the plaque do not have Alzheimer's. Hmm. Very interesting. So, Allison, um, what are brain exercises and how does that affect neuroplasticity? Well, doing brain exercises will help keep your brain stronger for longer. And the point is to have a challenge and have variety to the exercises that we do. Now, we want to exercise different parts of the brain. Playing Sudoku is a great exercise to um, enhance logic and reasoning. Mm -hmm. Doing crossword puzzles is great for visual, spatial, as well as language. So we want to have a challenge and we want to have variety of the exercises that we do. Neuroplasticity is the brain's ability to form new pathways or highways. 
so that the brain can remain stronger and to um, promote new brain cell development. Oh, wow, that's great. So, Dr. Trin, um, can you tell us if we are progressing in Alzheimer's research? Yes, and by the way, we're using our own immune system to address this condition. In immunotherapy, which is two words combined, the immune system and therapy, we are teaching your own immune system to identify the plaque as the bad guy so that the immune system heads up there, sees the plaque, and, and gobbles it up. Wow, that's so encouraging. Dr. Chen, I've heard um, that inflammation plays a significant role in uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. Can you explain? Yes, inflammation, especially chronic inflammation, harms the body in general and especially the brain. We found through autopsies of patients with Alzheimer's, uh, not only do they find plaque, we find many inflammation cells around the plaque. So there's a direct link to Alzheimer's and inflammation. Oh, thank you. Allison, if you believe you're having memory issues, um, what can we do? Well, Lisa, there's a lot of different resources available in the community. The first thing that I would suggest doing is having a physical examination with your doctor and make, to make sure that something medically isn't occurring. After that, you can go to a neuropsychologist and have testing done. You can uh, seek services with a therapist and talk about some maybe depression, anxiety, stress-related issues. There's a host of different um, resources in the community that you can take advantage of. Okay, thank you. This is a huge epidemic in Orange County with Alzheimer's as the third leading cause of death. But we have hope. We are seeing, uh, I believe, the light at the end of the tunnel based on the clinical research we are doing. And there are things we can do our lifestyle now to make a difference. I think it's important to keep that hope that we do have the resources in the community to get some help and to learn more about the disease process and what we can do to make a difference in our own lives. I just want to thank our guests, Allison Larrick and Dr. Trin. Thank you very much for your feedback and your time today. I'm Jim McAleer, the president and CEO of Alzheimer's Orange County. Now you might think because it's got Alzheimer's in the name that our nonprofit only deals with folks with severe memory loss. Not the case. We actually have tons of programs and services for folks who want to try and prevent the disease, for folks who might have mild cognitive impairment or some other form of memory loss. We're here with education 24-7, 345 days a year. You can find out more about our programs and services, including our adult day health care, right next door to the village at www.alzoc.org. That's alzoc.org. Next, we go to SKS Imaging in Irvine to find out more about how the testing begins. A lot of my patients from Laguna Woods have been here, and uh, can you tell us where you're at, just location-wise, KSK? Oh, sure. We're, we're right in the middle of Irvine. Uh, we're on Sand Canyon Avenue, right in between the 5 and the 405 freeway. Um, it's actually a great location. It's convenient to pretty much all of Southern Orange County, really. It's pretty easy to get here. Right. Yeah. And that's what I hear from uh, our patients who's been here. Yeah. Oh, and tell me about what a patient experiences when they walk through the door. Like, what's the process like? Well before the actual scan, we have to do the injection of the radioactive tracer, which is the heart of the PET scan. Right, and this tracer, this medication is designed to look for plaque. That's the specific purpose, to, to find that Alzheimer's plaque, if it's there, if it's not there, and, uh, and that gives us information on, on what we need to do uh, with that. Mm -hmm. And it is a painless procedure. It takes about a half an hour mm -hmm. uh, to do the actual scan, uh, but really people come away surprised by how easy it was. Awesome. Yeah, we simply just appreciate the fact that uh, KSK uh, exists here mm -hmm. uh, and how convenient it is from Laguna Woods and, uh, and the positive experiences that our patients from Laguna Woods have uh, had oh, yeah. here. And I think we're on this together. Alzheimer's Orange County, KSK, Irvine Clinical, Healthy Brain Club. Mm -hmm. It takes a team to look for a cure. Mm -hmm. And, and that, or, uh, that is our goal, to, yeah. to find something to stop this epidemic. Yeah. So, so in clinical research, uh, there's no charge for our patients. Mm -hmm. and, and we do that simply because we want patients to, uh, to not worry about costs, to not worry about finances, right. uh, to participate in uh, advancing uh, and looking for a better treatment for Alzheimer's. So it's free because we have sponsors. Uh, who basically 
have the same goal of stopping this disease. Mm -hmm. These specialized PET scans to look for uh, plaque associated with Alzheimer's is not available from just your primary care doc. You can't go to the doctor and says, I want a PET scan to look for Alzheimer's because it just isn't available to them. But through clinical research, through clinical research, we can offer that for candidates who are participating in these clinical trials at no cost to them. So it's a huge value to find out what's going on in here and, uh, and to see what we can do to help with that. So we know from, uh, from Dr. Lois Alzheimer's who have discovered this plaque called the, uh, the Alzheimer's plaque, uh, amyloid beta plaque, beta amyloid. Uh, we know the association between the plaque and the disease. Uh, the latest uh, that we are doing in clinical research is to look for ways to remove plaque. To look for ways to remove plaque. And we are doing that through immunotherapy mm -hmm. where we are able to train your own immune system to recognize the plaque as the bad guy. So that uh, your own immune system goes up there, sees the plaque, and, uh, and kind of gobbles it up is the whole strategy behind the, the current direction of Alzheimer's research where we're heading. And our clinical trials are based on immunotherapy. The majority of them, not all, but uh, we have clinical trials where no medication is required uh, to improve uh, memory. Uh, we prefer to catch the disease at the early stage. The, the earlier we can catch it, uh, the better, before it causes damage to the brain right. is the, our goal. And it's at that point that's where we fit in. Uh, Dr. Trent will uh, screen the, the potential patients, find eligible candidates for the trial. Uh, he sends them to us, and then we will give him a baseline screen for um, where the patient's starting. At that point, then, he can go through and uh, prescribe the immunotherapy or drug. Uh, and then over a period of time, we can give him subsequent studies, and, um, and that way he can track the actual progress of the patient over time. So this can take between one year and mm -hmm. several years, actually, right? And that's the whole goal of all this, is to catch this problem early and uh, to see what we can do uh, in mm -hmm. the early phases right. for, uh, for prevention and to try to stop this. It's never too late to, to not do anything mm -hmm. because we, there's always opportunities to, sure. to be proactive. But, uh, but the more brain cells that are lost uh, over time with, uh, as, the, as the plaque progresses and the damage occurs, it's definitely harder yeah. uh, for treatment options. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, early detection is key. Yeah. So the machine we have here is made by GE. It's actually a combination scanner. It's, it's a PET and CT scanner together. Uh, it's a relatively large piece of equipment. It probably weighs around 6,000 pounds. Uh, it has its own shielded room, uh, and we have to do that because uh, the uh, patient is actually being injected with a radioactive material, so uh, the areas are shielded that the patient is working in. Uh, and then the, the scan itself is, the PET scan itself is actually silent. It's a passive scan that the uh, patient actually lies in the machine, and we pull them through the detector, and it detects actually where the radiation is coming off the patient, and that concentration is actually the information that Dr. Trin uses to find the amyloid plaques. All right, I would love to take a look at the machine right now. Absolutely, let's do it, right down the hall. All right, awesome. Right here. Yeah. So patients you can lie down here, here yeah. the table goes in, and the scan occurs inside. So. Okay. Yeah. 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 Now, we will discuss some everyday therapies that can be used to slow the progression of MCI. So here we are at Cognitive Care Solutions, the Laguna Hills office, with Allison. And we are discussing the cognitive exercises. Allison will be demonstrating these exercises and talking about how they improve neuroplasticity. Allison? So Allison, this is the tools that you use for the cognitive exercises? Yes. So this book, um, Keep Your Brain Stronger for Longer, is a great book because it allows the client to know what part of the brain he or she is exercising. For instance, they can open this page and they'll be exercising executive functioning. If they go to the next page, it's language. So they can choose what page they want to work on and um, they do it in pencil so they can erase. And um, this page is for calculation, reasoning. Oh wow! These That's are terrific. all these are all parts of the brain that we want them to exercise. 
Okay. So many of our clients will get this book for homework, and they'll um, they'll see the therapist during the week, and then they will uh, purchase this book and take it home with them and do it at their leisure. Okay. Now, visual spatial, you had said, visual spatial is? That's good for your balance and depth perception. Yeah. Okay. Now, this book is um, a book of uh, word searches, mm -hmm. and again, this is good for visual, spatial, and balance. So this is something that they would do with a therapist in a session, possibly, and the therapist would be there to help them and guide them. Fantastic. And who would have thought that we were we should be doing these things since we were younger? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, this is a book, Brain Games. This has different types of brain exercises in it to exercise attention, visual, spatial, planning, logic and reasoning, analysis. Again, these are all different parts of the brain that should be exercised. Okay. Now, logic and reasoning is extremely important for um, figuring things out. Many times, um, people who have careers in engineering, in um, finance, have extremely good logic and reasoning because they've done this their whole life. Mm -hmm. And however, folks who have maybe um, been teachers, sometimes their logic and reasoning skills are not as high as those engineers. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we all exercise the different parts. Parts of the brain. Mm -hmm. To improve. That is interesting. Now, I'm always asked, what do I do about my memory? Mm -hmm. This game, the, um, all around the USA, is good for your long-term memory. It's going to ask questions that you have to think about from years ago. Um, state capitals, maybe uh, questions about states, things like that. So it tr does it trigger mm -hmm. uh, memories mm -hmm. to, okay. For your long-term. For long-term memory, gotcha. And then recall is good for your short-term memory. And that's one of the things, one of the parts of the um, brain that people ask me all the time, how do I improve my short-term memory? So sure. games like recall will help with that. Well, that is quite the visual. I love it. <laughs> I wish. Now, we hope this information is helpful. There are a lot of resources available to village residents. So watch your screen to see a few of them and good luck.